The parents of Washington State quarterback Tyler Helinski say the former Washington State quarterback had the degenerative brain condition chronic traumatic encephalopathy CTE, at the time of his suicide. During a Today Show interview on an upcoming Sports Illustrated documentary about their son, Mark and Kim Helinski did not blame the sport of Tyler's death, but they did acknowledge that he most likely got stage 1 CTE from playing football, and it was almost certainly a factor in his suicide. Did football kill Tyler? Kim says in the documentary. I don't think so. Did he get CTE from football? Probably. Was that the only thing that attributed to his death? I don't know. As Mark Told said on Tuesday's Today Show, the medical examiner said his 21-year-old son had the brain of a 65-year-old. He was the sweetest, most outgoing, giving kid, Mark continued. That was difficult to hear. On January 16, Hirlinski shot himself in the head with a rifle that he had stolen from a teammate four days earlier, according to police. He was seen that morning when he dropped teammates off at class, but when he didn't show up for practice, two teammates went to his apartment where they found his body. Hirlinski was only 21 and had appeared in just 11 college football games, yet he was still diagnosed with stage 1 CTE, which is connected to depression, among other symptoms. Although they said he did not give any verbal signs, both parents said they noticed changes in Helinski before his suicide, and Mark even told SI that we missed it and we let him down. Share this article share however, Kim spent the days prior to her son's death pleading with Tyler via text messages to call her because she was worried about him becoming distant. In the documentary, Kim confessed to continuing to text Tyler's phone after his death, Hi Ty. I wish you didn't leave me. I miss you so much. CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, is a degenerative brain disease that is caused by repeated hits to the head. It is very similar to Alzheimer's in the way that it starts with inflammation and a buildup of tau proteins in the brain. These clumps of tau protein built up in the frontal lobe, which controls emotional expression and judgment, similar to dementia. This interrupts normal functioning and blood flow in the brain, disrupting and killing nerve cells. With Universal Service's privacy policy gradually, these proteins multiply and spread, slowly killing other cells in the brain. Over time, this process starts to trigger symptoms in the sufferer, including confusion, depression, and dementia. Aaron Hernandez had CTE when he committed suicide by Mia DeGroff, health editor The Neuroscientist who analyzed Aaron Hernandez's brain found he suffered the worst case of CTE ever seen in someone so young, with severe damage to regions that affect memory, impulse control and behavior. The 27-year-old former New England Patriots player killed himself in April 2017 while serving life in prison for murder. In September, Dr. Anne Mickey of the CTE Center at Boston University posthumously diagnosed Hernandez with chronic traumatic encephalopathy, a football-linked disease that causes dementia and aggression. She formally presented her findings a month later and confirmed that she had never encountered such extreme degradation in a young brain, pointing out areas of severe tissue damage and microbleeds likely caused by blows to the head. They also found a variant of the apogene, which has been linked to increased risk of Alzheimer's, but the scientists emphasized that no gene could inflict the same damage as years of heavy impact from tackling. Dr. Mickey says she could not say for certain that Hernandez's criminal and suicidal acts were a result of his severe case of CTE, nor whether other 27-year-old players could plausibly have the same pathology. But she says Hernandez suffered substantial damage to several important regions, including the frontal lobe. In this age group. He's clearly at the severe end of the spectrum, Mickey said. Officially, Hernandez had only one concussion during his playing career. By the later stages, there are four stages of pathology, the tau deposits expand from the frontal lobe, at the top, to the temporal lobe, on the sides. This affects the amygdala in the hippocampus, which controls emotion and memory. Hilinxi's parents donated his brain to the Mayo Clinic after his death. 
a previous study by Boston University, found the level of CTE in 110 out of 111 deceased former NFL players, 7 of 8 Canadian Football League players, and 48 of 53 college football players. I remember being like kind of know him because you don't think your son is gonna die and you certainly don't think he's going to kill himself, Kim said in the documentary. And you certainly don't think that you have to give his brain to the Mayo Clinic for an autopsy. They said the tau protein was something you would never see in someone who was 21 years old, but in a much more older, elderly man, Kim added. And it was shocking because we know Tyler. Yes, he was quiet. Yes, he was a little bit more reserved, but he was always happy. Helinski was a promising talent after two seasons with the Cougars. Heading into his junior year, when he was likely to become the team's full-time starter, Helinski completed 154 of 209 passes for 1,421 yards and nine touchdowns. Despite Tyler's diagnosis, Mark and Kim's other son, Ryan, has committed to play quarterback at South Carolina. Having those results back, seeing all the people that have been affected by that disease kind of did scare me a little bit," Ryan said in the documentary. But it kind of made me take a step back and say, OK, well what if I get hit a couple more times, will I turn out to what Tyler was going through but what do I do if football is not the thing for me," he continued. But I'm all bought into football, of course, and I think Tyler would want me to do the same thing. I don't think he'd want me to stop. Many notable former football players committed suicide, only to be posthumously diagnosed with CTE. Former San Diego Chargers linebacker Junior So and former Chicago Bears safety Dave Dorsen both shot themselves in the chest so that their brains could be preserved for CTE research. Former New England Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez hanged himself from his bedsheets in April of 2017 while serving life in prison for murder. Researchers at Boston University later said Hernandez had one of the most advanced cases of CTE that they had ever seen. Brain injuries in sports, the fast facts about risks, tests, symptoms and reserved be me at DeGroff. U.S. health editors athletes of all sports speak out about their brain injury fears, we run through the need to know facts about risks, symptoms, tests and research. 1. Concussion is a red herring, big hits are not the problem, all head hits cause damage all sports insist they are doing more to prevent concussions in athletes to protect their brain health. However, Boston University, the leading center on this topic, published a groundbreaking study in January to demolish the obsession with concussions. Concussions, they found, are the red herring, it is not a big hit that triggers the beginning of a neurodegenerative brain disease. Nor does a big hit makes it more likely. In fact, it is the experience of repeated subconcussive hits over time that increases the likelihood of brain disease. In a nutshell, any tackle or header in a game or even in practice increases the risk of a player developing a brain disease. 2. What is the fear disease CTE head hits can cause various brain injuries, including ALS, the disease Stephen Hawking had, Parkinson's, and dementia. But CTE is one that seems to be particularly associated with blows to the head, while the others occur commonly in non-athletes. CTE Chronic traumatic encephalopathy is a degenerative brain disease that is caused by repeated hits to the head. It is very similar to Alzheimer's in the way that it starts with inflammation and a buildup of tau proteins in the brain. These clumps of tau protein build up in the frontal lobe, which controls emotional expression and judgment, similar to dementia. This interrupts normal functioning and blood flow in the brain, disrupting and killing nerve cells. Gradually, these proteins multiply and spread, slowly killing other cells in the brain. Over time, this process starts to trigger symptoms in the sufferer, including confusion, depression, and dementia. By the later stages, there are four stages of pathology. The tau deposits expand from the frontal lobe, at the top, to the temporal lobe, on the sides. This affects the amygdala in the hippocampus, which controls emotion and memory. 3. 
What are the symptoms sufferers and their families have described them turning into ghosts? CTE affects emotion, memory, spatial awareness, and anger control. Symptoms include suicidal thoughts and controllable rage irritability forgeting names, people, things, like dementia refusal to eat or talk for. Can sufferers be diagnosed during life? No. While a person may suffer from clear CTE symptoms, the only way to diagnose their CTE is in a post-mortem examination. More than 3,000 former athletes and military veterans have pledged to donate their brains to the Concussion Legacy Foundation for CTE research. Meanwhile, there are various studies on current and former players to identify biomarkers that could detect CTE.